All right, welcome everyone. My name is Lennox Bennett. You can call me for PEP, Sikyangis, and CSEC Mathematics. Now, this is for the PEP students, grade four, and there's a high possibility that you guys will be working with me after watching this video. All right, so I have classes. You can sign up your child, relative, or whatever, all right? So you guys, there's my number. Persons always asking for my number whenever they watch my videos. So definitely I'm leaving it so you guys can um, contact me easily, all right? So the first one says, which two sets contain the same number of chickens? Now, I'm talking to the students now. Now, what you are required to do is to count each box of chickens and the one that matches, all right? So don't estimate it, count them and see what you get. And then the, the numbers that are the same, that will be your answer, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this has six chickens, so put the six there, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has seven chickens. And this now, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, three and four, both as eight. They are the same. So our answer would be three and four. So let us look for that options. Option three and four, and that will be D, right? Six and seven are different, seven and eight are different. Same in their exact, all right? So let's move on to two. Which set of numerals is arranged from the smallest to the largest? In other words, they could have said ascending order. Now, ascending order is from the smallest to the largest. All right, so let us investigate. So we have 470, 4.7, 4.9. So we're going down here. So it couldn't be this because it has to start from the smallest. Now, 4.2 would be the smallest in this, all right? So a 4 point, no, can't be this either because it's still a 4.9, right? And that's the largest here. All right, let's look at this one now. 4.2, 4.5, 4.7, 4.9, and that would be C, right? It's as if you could have said 420, 450, right? And 490. It's very important for you to know the value, right? So that would be C. All right, see my number again, guys. I make sure to do that because your persons are always asking. Some students are waiting in a line to enter a chicken farm. Which student is in the fourth? In the line from the entrance, notice they say from the entrance, right? Fourth. So this is first, second, fifth, and sixth, right? So they ask for fourth and it says from, so it's from the entrance, right? If, if it was from here, we would have to the reverse, which is one, two, three, four, and it would have been Jane. But notice they say from the entrance. Notice the keywords, right? They are teaching you guys to analyze. Again, you guys join my class and we can work together. The number, the numbers 100 and 200, 100 and 200 are shown on the number line. What is the best estimate of the number located X? Now, you can approach this two way. I would say since right here and right here, I will try to find estimate halfway. So halfway between 100 and 200, would be 150. So right here would be our 150. So we can eliminate 150. Can't be 150 because it goes further, right? So, so this now, the distance from here would be about, so this now would be about 50 between them, right? From here to here would be about 50 means the distance. No, halfway will be 200. Let me eat it now. Right, so it's a hundred on either side. It's 100 here, 100 plus 100 give you 200, 200 plus that give you, right? 
So uh, this node is a little bit less than it says about 50 or 40, right? So that means it would be 240. So we can eliminate the 200, right? 290 would be too close to this. So it would definitely be 240. Guys, this is how we are supposed to reason it out. Don't rush into it. Take your time and do it, all right? Number five, see my number there again, 5491621, which shows an odd number of eggs. Now, what's an odd number? An odd number is not divisible by two, right? So it can't be divided by two without leaving a remainder. So odd numbers are like one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, all right? So let us see. So we have one, two, three, four, write down the number, right? That's an even number, right? So one, two, three, four. So five would be an odd number, right? I would say odd numbers are numbers like one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, and 13, right? So that would be number six. Which decimal represents a fraction of unshaded feathers shown below? Now, guys, notice the word unshaded, all right? So they want the ones that are clear are not shaded. And also they want the decimal. Now, before we can do the decimal, let's just figure out the fraction. Now, let's count how many feathers there are in all. That would be our denominator. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are 10 feathers and that would be our denominator. Now, let us see how many are not shaded. So this is shaded, so this is not shaded. So that's one, two, three, four. So that's four out of 10. Now, our challenge is to write four out of 10 as a decimal. Now, when we are dividing by 10, the decimal point is right here. It's to the right, for all whole numbers, it's to the right. And because we are dividing by 10, we move one place to our left. Why one? Because it's only one zero. So that would give us 0 0.4. So that would be B. All right, let's look at number seven. Take the light button, if you know one, guys. What is 34 rounded to the nearest 10? All right, so let us put things in perspective. So we have 34 and we want to find the nearest 10. Or the nearest 10 would either be 30 or 40. It's actually distance. So 34, is it closer to 40 or is it closer to 30? Let's investigate. So how many more do we need to go to 40? 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. We will need six more to go to 40, right? Let us see how many we have to drop off. We just take off four, right? So four is a much smaller number. So we are closer to 30. So therefore 30 would be our answer, all right? This is how I show my students. Number eight, which best describes 10 over eight? Now, this is a fraction, right? Now, let us look and investigate. We have 10 over eight. Now, the numerator is bigger than the denominator, right? So that means it's an improper. Whenever we have the numerator smaller, for example, a half fraction, all right? But if we have so our answer would be a number. All right, so our answer is a. Let's look at mixed number, right? Now mixed number is a whole number and a fraction. So three and a half would be a mixed number. Hit the like button, I know you're, I know you're learning. Number nine, which number sentence is true? All right. This A says 112 is equal to 121. No, that is not true. 112 is less than, so that is not true. B says 112 is greater. This sign means greater than. When I turn it, so you can use the right hand to remember. 112 is not greater than 121. It's actually less. All right, let's look at this one now. 712 is less than two. 117, that is not correct, all right? So this is 712 is a larger number. This one now, this says 712 is greater and this would be correct. So our answer would be B. E. All right, let's move on to number 10. There are two groups of chickens. One group of chickens ate four seven of chicken feed. 
of the other group ate another one over seven of the same chicken feed. How much of the chicken feed did the two groups of chickens eat all together? Once you see the word all together, sum, add, total, that means for hard. All right, so we're gonna add. So the first group ate four sevenths, right? Plus the next group ate one seventh. Now the denominator is the same, so we can add the top. So that would be the other way, put it long way. So find the LCM, which is seven, LCM of the denominator, seven to seven, one. Multiply this, we get four times one is four, plus seven to this one, multiplied by one, that is one. And then we add the top, which is four plus one, five out of seven. So that would be A, all right? When the denominator is the same, we could just add the top, right? So the four plus two one would give us five, and we maintain the denominator. So this is food for thought. All right, so let's move on to number 11. Number there again, which number is missing from the series? Now we have 18, 22, a number should be there, then 30, then 34. So what is our job? Our job is to find out what number they are adding each time. Now we are at 18, how did we get to 22? What number plus 18 gives us 22? So we say 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That would be four. So each time we are supposed to add four. So 21 plus four would give us 22 rather than six. So our answer would be 26. And we can check it. 26 plus four gives us 30. 30 plus four gives us 34, all right? So let's move on to number 12. It costs $450 each day to feed chickens on a chicken farm. How much money will it cost to feed the same number of chickens for five days? Five long days. Now, all we have to do is to, we can do it two ways. We can either add 450 five times, or we could just multiply five, five times zero, zero, five, five, 25. Our answer would be D. Number 13, hit the like button, please. Which number can be divided exactly by four and six? Four and six, All right? So which of these numbers can both four and six go into without a remainder, all right? So one way you could do it is keep adding four each time. Say another way time table. They just keep adding, right? For both of them. Each time you're adding four, 24 plus that, 28 plus that, 32 plus that, 36 plus that, 40 plus that, 44. All right, it's 12, 12 plus 6, 18 plus 6, 24 plus 6, 30 plus that, 36. Now, the fact that 36 comes, it will be 36 because what they're asking for, what is the lowest common multiple of four and six, which is 36. All right, so 14 says add, they could have said some, add 843 plus, that would be 9, 7, 4, 11, carry 1, 8 and 1, 9 plus that 12. So that would be B, 1,290. All right, so hit the like button, guys. Number 15. Which mathematical sentence can also represent the repeated addition shown in the diagram below? Is it 12 divided by three? No, right? First, let us add and see how many eggs we get in total. That is the key. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're supposed to get 12 in total. Is it 12 divided by, no, we did not divide, right? One multiplied by 12, is it one group of 12? No, it's not one group of 12, but it's six groups of two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six groups of two, and that is equal to 12. So C is the distractor there. So make sure you look how many groups there are, how many are in each. Which unit of measure would be the most suitable to express the volume of our water chickens drink daily? Is it milliliter, 
minute, gram, or centimeter, right? What is the other liquid measuring? Is it minute? I'm gonna just write for each. This, the answer would be A. So this would be for liquid, EJ liquid. This would be time is when you're doing the weight like or heavy gram of sugar and this is the length so our answer would be a milliliter it could have been a liter all right so let's move on to some number there again please what temperature reading is shown on the thermometer below all right so let us see how it's going right so we see from zero this then 10 right so basically we are going up by five, see there? Zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So we're going up by five, so that would be 35 degrees. It's halfway between 30 and 40, all right? So the thermometer is showing for which best, which sign best represent a square? Now this would not be a square, this would be a circle. I think everyone should be able to get this one. Let's see how many sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is an hexagon. As I 